So, um, I will just uh, basically uh, give a little introduction to today's session. Um, my name is Jürgen Ritzek. I'm co-chairing uh, the Action Cluster Business Model Finance well, and Procurement, um, belonging to the Smart City Marketplace. So, welcome everybody to today's session. Um, as you can see, topic of today is uh, pre-commercial procurement. Um, and at the same time, this is also the official kickoff um, of uh, this as a new initiative under the Action Cluster Business Model and Finance. Um, as you might know, um, Action Clusters are part of the uh, Smart City Marketplace uh, to enable knowledge and expertise sharing. And ideally, sharing of knowledge goes uh, beyond just uploading another presentation to the website. Then the more real it is, um, the better it is. Um, and that's what we want to achieve also with this initiative. Because this one is linked to an EU project which has just started. And that means it doesn't just allow you to, um, to learn. It allows you to actively participate and even benefit financially from it. Um, but just going briefly back um, to the Action Cluster itself. <clears throat> Today, under the Action Cluster Business Model Finance, we have uh, four initiatives. Um, one is about digital financing platforms. Uh, and I will present that next week um, at the Covenant of Mayors Investment Forum. So if you're interested to join and just register, it's uh, taking place on uh, next Tuesday, 4 to 5 um, p.m. under the topic of uh, ESCOs as a tool to achieve the energy efficiency targets in Europe. Uh, the second one is the initiative uh, pre-commercial um, procurement. That's basically the kickoff today. And then we have two further initiatives, which are in the last phase and basically ready to start, which are city wisdom and city coaching. Uh, and if you want to, um, you know, have more information about them, please just go to the Smart City Marketplace website uh, and you uh, find there nice and dis um, clear descriptions. So enough from my side uh, for the moment. Uh, for today's one hour session, uh, I have the pleasure now to hand over to uh, Georg Vogt from the German company Empirica uh, and his colleague uh, Nadja Koval, who will run the show for you. So floor is yours. Thanks, Jürgen. Uh, I'm very much uh, delighted to speak today at this event. So I'm starting. So I'd like to start then with a brief introduction first. Um, the European Commission supports innovation procurement as a tool to deliver solutions to economic and societal challenges. So it basically, basically it consists of two tools. The one is uh, pre-commercial procurement, uh, which is PCP, and the public procurement of innovation solutions, which is PPI. However, I will talk more uh, uh, in more detail about the PCP since we are presenting here our project, Procurie, and which is a PCP project. So the pre-commercial procurement is used when there are no near-to-the-market solutions yet, um, and there is a new uh, R&D is uh, very much needed. So PCP enables procurers uh, to compare potential solution approaches and then to filter out uh, the best possible solutions uh, so that the market could deliver to address the public needs. So the PCP enables companies to create competitive advantage on the market. And while it is generally a single department in traditional procurement, in PCP it is the buyers group that consists uh, usually of uh, several procurers and that ensures a more effective development uh, by generating a number of very different um, creative and innovative solutions. And as PCP ensures creativeness, uh, this also allows to develop breakthrough innovative solutions for challenges for the future. For example, in, in the healthcare domain, it might be a non yet existing mobile app for patients to track their health indicators, for example. In our clean energy domain, like Procure, it is a very um, big complex of uh, different technologies. Uh, in traditional procurement, the level of solutions is relatively uh, low since the products are created on a very short-term basis. And in contrast, uh, PCP starts earlier and demands more R&D effort. So the advantage here is that we can firstly see the prototypes, uh, we develop them, we test them, then we evaluate them before we spend much money and before we bring the product to a wider market. 
Another element to reduce risks and costs is uh, to procure the R&D in phases over a period of time. Uh, this ensures the competition between suppliers to create, uh, to create a range of options. As a consequence, we have a lot of solutions developed and the best concept designs are chosen then to deploy. And development uh, in several phases, like solution design, prototype uh, development, prototype field testing, this also uh, ensures that the end solution will be likely better suited to the market needs in, cost in contrast to development of the product in just one stage on a very short-term uh, basis. In the risk-benefit sharing approach, the procurers also share the R&D results with the public authorities and the industry. And the approach is also beneficial for both procurers and suppliers because both parties uh, have this incentive to pursue a uh, wide commercialization and take up of the new solutions. As a consequence, we see that new IPRs appear, whereas in traditional procurement, it is often based on already existing IPRs. So this doesn't contribute much to the uh, market uh, in, co in contrast to the PCP. Next slide, please. Thanks. And one of the most uh, crucial features of PCP is that it reduces risks for both procurers and suppliers to innovate. And we compare the pros and cons of completing of competing solutions. And as, as a consequence, uh, this um, number of solutions and this uh, comparison, there risks the most promising innovation step by step. Suppliers also act as demanding customers. That's why they shape the solutions because they better know the market. Uh, they apply this niche approach by creating opportunities for companies to enter new markets. All solutions created with PCP are not pure lab projects. They are created for real world and they are tested in phase free. This is uh, prototype field testing under real world conditions. This is what really helps the products created um, and developed in the PCC process to be uh, very much uh, suited to the market needs because they are being tested and then maybe adjusted later uh, for the real world. The procurer does not reserve the R&D results exclusively for its own use. The public authorities and industry share risks and benefits and this um, creates optimum conditions for wider commercialization of R&D results. And with PCP, there's also a chance of a very high visibility of the solution. Uh, suppliers might get exposure already on an early stage product. And moreover, you also get the possibility to closely interact with multiple procurers. For example, in our case, it is six procurers from six countries. The Commission supports PCP because it enables procurers uh, and suppliers to facilitate uh, the access of new innovative actors uh, into the market. For example, very small startups, small and medium sized, uh, sized enterprises. Uh, driving innovation from the demand side also enables the public sector to modernize public services faster, which creates opportunities for companies in Europe to gain leaderships in new markets. This all contributes to a company and economics growth. Uh, PCP stimulates company growth and also on an international level. Just imagine a third of all PCP contracts are awarded cross-border, which is 20 times more than the average uh, of public procurement across Europe. PCP reduces also mark, uh, market fragmentation because it delivers not yet, uh, not yet existing solutions. It also reduces costs for procurers in this way. In this way. And as a consequence, uh, PCP process creates highly qualified R&D jobs in Europe. Now we are coming to a comparison uh, of these two procurement tools, PCP and PPI. However, it is very important to understand that these are two tools and they are complementary. And whereas PCP steers the R&D development of solution towards certain public needs, PPI acts as an early adopter of end solutions and it facilitates the wide diffusion of them onto the market. So in this way, uh, PPI um, involves no R&D, whereas PCP is a, is a R&D uh, development phase of the product. 
Uh, Pre-commercial procurement is also a preparation exercise which enables public purchases to filter out technological risks. And the fact that the company has done the R&D and developed a working test series cannot guarantee that the product uh, will, for example, win a contract for mass delivery. So it is only gets clear in the end of the pre-commercial procurement whether the developed solutions truly outperform other solutions available at the same time on the market or not. And PPI thus provides a large demand uh, so that industry invests in scaling up the production and brings innovative solutions to the market with the best quality price ratio needed for the mass market deployment. So this enables the public sector to modernize public services with uh, better value for money solutions. So I think this was all from my side. So I'm now handing over the floor to you, Georg. Thank you, Nadia. So uh, thanks, Nadia. Nadia gave basically the picture of the instrument as a whole from the EC point of view of what it should deliver, of what it can do. Uh, and I'm going to talk about how, what we are going to do with the tool in Procure and how we're going to deploy uh, uh, the project and the tool in itself. Um, so first about the Procure project, our aim, our scope. Basically, we have many, many buildings in Europe and our current approach will not work if we want to achieve 2050 targets. We need to find new solutions to the problem of renovating buildings. And um, you can argue from the point of view that we need to uh, achieve more carbon savings sooner. But you can also argue simply from a market point of view that our current approach of visiting a building several times to achieve 100% uh, renewables or 100, zero carbon, depending on what you uh, look at, um, is simply wasting resources and basically visiting a building twice achieves only part of the goal and uh, it occupies the staff required from uh, renovating another building. Basically one of our um, bottlenecks we definitely will face, in Germany at least we are facing already and I think a few other countries as well. And from Procure's point of view, um, it is too difficult. It is simply too difficult to procure, to renovate a lot of buildings, be it for the money, be it for uh, making the choices and the decisions. And um, basically, they need a new model to be able to say, I don't know, Istanbul, one of our cities, has uh, several thousand buildings. Uh, to get a larger number of buildings into the pipeline per year to and to perform the renovation. This is the overview of our project. We are six cities, six procurers who form the buyers group and together they have one challenge. They want to eliminate offsite supply on existing buildings. If offsite supply is uh, eliminated, it means that the energy necessary will be produced on site. For this, the cities are going to spend 7.68 million. A lot of it is being contributed by the EC, but some of it they also feed in. And uh, this money is going to be spent in three competitive phases, as Nadia just described. In the final phase, we're going to equip three offices and three schools. Now, what are we expecting to happen in the project? Um, right now, we are not, we don't have any suppliers yet. We are in the search. We are in an open uh, market consultation uh, phase right now. We will basically try to understand what there is and how we best tender our challenge, our request. And what we expect from the suppliers uh, after much consideration is basically an approach which will ensure and guarantee that they are not only uh, doing a lighthouse project, basically going to one or two buildings to make them 100% renewable and pretty, but that they are able to uh, roll this solution out, that they can go out to hundreds of buildings and basically repeat the same. Hence, we expect from the suppliers a framework or platform approach in which they have a toolkit ready at hand and they can apply it. They have methods, they have an approach, and they can uh, choose from the draws what they need to go into a particular building and to uh, run it. We assume that BIM, BIM will uh, play a major role simply because it makes many processes uh, more efficient once it is set up throughout the um, uh, phases of um, design, retrofitting, and then operation. 
And this is another important part. Operation must be considered as part of the retrofit that basically uh, the performance of the building is guaranteed and uh, observed over time. An issue of the procurers was mentioned that basically current uh, uh, suppliers expect way too much from the uh, from any city employee that he are, is supposed to do, uh, know a lot of technologies to be able to differentiate uh, across performances. He cannot do this. It's not realistic. This must be switched. Procurers must be able to provide enough information which can be acted upon. Nevertheless, decisions need to be taken throughout the process. And for this, in also a new and more quick and more efficient approach is required to make the decisions together. Yeah, that there is an information exchange, and basically at certain uh, points in time, uh, uh, the interplay makes sure that the design of the building is complete, that everything is being considered, everything which is not allowed to be done, everything which must be done, and anything which might have come uh, in between that somebody has forgotten. That it feeds in and it gets to one solution, which is then easily deployed. And another bottleneck is money. Um, if the procurers are required to finance large sums in the first year, they will only be able to uh, handle so many buildings per year. Ideally, this curve is flattened. It is not like this in the cost curve of a retrofit, but rather flat, uh, that uh, contracting models and the like are being considered um, so that more buildings can be retrofitted sooner and at the same time. And all this, this platform, this flat framework is then applied in, in the buildings with specific, specific requirements as to the performance of the solution, which is then installed in the building. Taken from the framework, a solution going to the building has to achieve 100% renewable supply on site. And it has to deliver this uh, throughout the day, throughout the night, over the year. We are not expecting uh, off-grid uh, applications. There will always be the winters which are super harsh or the cloudy summers. So um, the building will remain connected to the grid and as a bal for balancing purposes as well, but uh, mostly for covering these 5% of untypical uh, periods. And um, But nevertheless, over the majority of the time, the building should operate by itself and um, should be able to store the energy. So storage is basically a prerequisite. The toolbox of the suppliers should be easily applied. Yeah, So they basically have selected uh, the devices well enough that they can go to any building and that it slots in with any legacy devices, but also in maybe uh, different regulation, uh, regulatory environments and so on. The more efficient a building is, the more important is the occupant. You know, opening a window in a highly efficient building is not good, either in summer, summer nor in winter. Um, so good behavioral action must be triggered through the system or by support of the necessary staff uh, uh, and basically guaranteed over time, not only at the peak at the beginning, but basically uh, throughout um, the lifetime of the building. Yeah, we assume that the building is maintained through the from the distance, which implies another issue that basically any local contractors must be able uh, to be um, utilize the very complex and new technology. Current uh, currently lo um, contractors locally are specialized on pipes or on uh, certain cables. Maybe they have to do both at the same time, plus understand the data cable. So some sort of augmented reality training, whatever not. Uh, must be provided with a solution to um, uh, to run the building, to be able to make changes to the building, which cannot be done remotely. Basically, whenever something needs to be touched, people must be enabled to know what they are touching and what they are doing it for. You hear a lot of uh, what we should do. That's it. Basically, we describe the problem We've described the problem, the challenge we are facing. The, um, I speak we, I'm not a procurer, but uh, the procurers together describe a problem uh, of what they um, they want to have they want to have solved by others. Yeah? So 
we present the money, we describe the problem, we define the award criteria by which we would assess any solution to it, but the suppliers come with a solution and it is technology open. The solution, we are not yet, we are not predetermined as to what the solution looks like, whether all energy comes from, uh, from wind or all energy comes from PV or a mix of it. It is um, uh, up to the suppliers to um, basically define the framework to convince us that this framework is operational, it can be replicated, and then convince us with uh, basically modeling the buildings at a later stage in the project, uh, that they can deliver the necessary uh, performance uh, and then be invited to install the solution into the building. Technolo from a technological point of view, um, I have just thrown a lot of different technologies into the air to structure this problem a bit. We have um, created the building blocks. There are eight of them. Uh, you will recognize a lot of what I said before, basically in this uh, in this in this flower of uh, issues, and um, with each building block in each building block, uh, there is often a lot. Sometimes what there is is sufficient, but the issue is that the integration of all these issues is not being provided by the market at all. So we expect progress beyond the state of the art in part within these building blocks, but definitely across these building stocks, uh, building blocks, uh, excuse me. The system integration is a key issue and uh, hence the design of this platform, of this framework is probably the largest challenge for any supplier to, uh, to bid. In the pitch deck, there's a large PowerPoint deck you can uh, you can download. The um, the background of it is described in more detail and it will be then also part of the so-called uh, for, the, for the request for tender where we basically will structure um, the application form the suppliers are expected to fill in by these building blocks maybe with slightly different names and a slightly different order but a lot of it will be repeated. Understanding the building blocks helps to understand what will be required in the um, technical tender. So that's the overview. Uh, as you see, our uh, spread uh, geographically is very large, also in terms of climate zones. Uh, but that's the point. The solution is to be able is not supposed to be a lighthouse project, but to go into um, market across Europe to be available to other procurers. This is also why we are here, uh, that to basically search for other procurers to demand side, the demand side cities most likely, uh, to follow us a bit and to also provide us with input as to what um, uh, we should consider and what we should request from our suppliers. I have noted it before. If you have any questions, uh, just write them in the chat or take note of them. Obviously, there will be a Q&A session afterwards. So I spoke about the technical part. Now, how is pre-commercial being realized as part of the project? What needs to happen to basically make it uh, work legally um, and to make to ensure that all parties have the same expectations and are happy uh, uh, throughout the pro uh, process? There are four core phases in a uh, project, in a PCP project. Phase zero is basically where we are now. We are searching for suppliers to basically approach them. We are searching and talking to the suppliers to understand what they can offer, where the limits are. We are talking to other procurers as well to basically understand uh, what they think the core issue is. And we collect all this information to write the call for tenders, which is to be published in October. And then on, we have three phases, a competitive phases, in which we, um, in the first phase, we will most likely select eight suppliers uh, to basically design their solution, what they des described in the proposal uh, further, and the best four are chosen for the phase two. And we have not yet decided how many we apply, uh, we get into phase three. Uh, it will be two or three, basically. The question is whether they, uh, the suppliers will then equip three or two buildings. No matter what, only one supplier per building, obviously, because the building can't be shared. 
Um, you see the budget at the bottom. Uh, um, the development part is uh, roughly 40%, and then the deployment part is uh, the rest for phase three. Just in detail uh, for phase one, eight suppliers. The phase is short because it is a development phase. It's basically who can develop the idea further uh, best. And um, yeah, any output created throughout the four phases obviously leads to the ultimate result of deploying the solution to the buildings. I already mentioned it in phase two, four. The sum increases, the phase gets longer, and ultimately, uh, phase three, the longest phase, we plan with at least one year operation in the building, so basically to have a complete data set of the building, to have evidence over the performance of the solution, uh, with which we can then obviously also write guidance to other procurers to um, on what to consider during procurement on what to consider during operation. In October, we expect the tenant to be published in October. Uh, we are currently writing it. We are then going to submit it to the EC. We will then discuss it with the EC. If they approve, then we can uh, publish it in October. But as you know, 2020 is uh, special and 21 as well. And um, yeah, but currently you are very confident that it still will work out. What is a PCP in sense of receiving money? I mean, I assume the majority of those present are uh, procurers, so cities, those who are going to spend the money. Yeah, but good. yes, I'm going to interrupt you here. Um, we just had a chance, basically, um, to make, to interrupt for for two minutes or so. Georg Holbein is here, who is the policy officer from Office of the European Commission and is heading the whole smart city marketplace. Ah. He has to leave soon, so maybe you, know, you can uh, say just hello in a few words. You're probably muted. I cannot hear you. No, unfortunately, it seems that your microphone is not connected. Uh, he, I think he will rejoin. So we give it a second try. Yes, uh, I think it would be very valuable to, to have this input here. It's exciting. I didn't, I wasn't aware. I didn't yeah, I thought you, you might not see it because you were showing your screen, I guess. Um, yeah. So thanks, Jürgen, for, for jumping in here. Um, Georg, um, it might be better if you rejoin here. Um, leave to the lobby and rejoin because um, sometimes it doesn't take the rights for the microphone here. Yes, thank you so much. Um, and then maybe Georg, you could uh, continue once um, the other Ge Georg rejoins. Yeah. There are so many Georgs here. So. <laughs> it is unusual. It normally, it doesn't happen to me. But uh, as soon you just interrupt me as soon as he's there. Yeah, but I now I see that Georg rejoined and, and he, his mic was connected. Maybe he is able to, to come in here now. No, I don't see that. I don't see Georg yet. It always takes a second until he can show himself. Wow. Well, yeah, then um, I would yeah ask Georg Fug to, to continue and then we There's figure the out that Georg. I can see him in the list. He's muted. Yeah, Georg. Let's try again. Can yes, you... it works. Hi. <laughs> okay. This is this is COVID at its best. No, <laughs> guys. Sorry. So first of all, sorry for rushing in and disrupt uh, interrupting the other Georg in this call. Um, Don't worry, no sweat. <laughs> all very all, all very interesting and also very important. I need to head to another meeting, unfortunately. I would have loved to stay until the very end to discuss a few options with you, of course. I think what you are uh, presenting here, PCP, PPI, um, these concepts, I, I think what we should try with the marketplace operations, in fact, is uh, you know we have the matchmaking, we have a number of action clusters, we have initiatives under the marketplace, and we have, let's say, we have the willingness and vision to connect the marketplace to many other initiatives on EU level. 
in order to really facilitate the, uh, you know, bringing about smart city solutions in the urban context. That is helping city administrations, startups, SMEs, but also banks to get involved, to really, you know, drive this forward very practically, very hands-on. So what I would like to trigger, and maybe that's already part of your thinking and your, your let's say, your vision, is um, how can we really practically make this happen? So if you speak, for example, about PCP, how can we probably and most practically put that at the fingertips of uh, city administrators or civil servants? but maybe also at the fingertips of uh, startups, SMEs, like truly the local ecosystem, picking this up and mainstreaming that into what happens in terms of procurement um, and, and deployment of smart solutions. Because, I mean, you heard it maybe throughout the event, 100 climate neutral cities will not just you know appear like that. We have to do a whole lot on private financing here. We have to be very clever and innovative also, I think, when it comes to public procurement, but what is really needed is is, is true capacity uh, building support for city administrators because most of them, and I'm just you know I'm I'm also a, a, um, a citizen in a small town, um, and if you speak to them about smart cities or innovative procurement or or you know such like, they will just scratch scratch their head. They might even go as far as sending you out of the office, like let me alone with this. Um, so what we need to really establish is a, a true understanding how these mechanisms work, I think. And the business models cluster is right there to help with that. So what you guys do here is, is really helpful, I think. What's missing, I feel, maybe I'm wrong, is still the glue, the ingredient which will uh, connect what you do with the actual projects on the ground when reaching out via the matchmaking mechanism, for example, but also reaching out to other initiatives. Uh, we have Living in EU, to name a few, or uh, the Covenant of Mayors. Uh, there is the Intelligent Cities Challenge, you know, just to name a few, um, Civitas. Um, and there is potential for replicating and picking up solutions which were already implemented and are proven. And so maybe PCP, PPI, whatever other mechanisms we find, um, could maybe help with that. And, and and that is sort of my main message. And it might be totally wrong because that might be already part of your vision. So I would stop here, Jürgen and, and Georg and also Nadia. And I would also like to thank you for your very interesting insights, really. Thank you. Sorry. No, I can say thank you, Georg. Yeah, and I, I, I think that is basically where we were likely heading to after the, the presentations. Um, and as uh, Georg already mentioned, uh, it is um, um, it's a nucleus here and what is presented. Uh, and uh, it was just said a couple of times, it is open to further cities. They're more than welcome, so increase procurers group. It is open to uh, further to suppliers. Uh, and that is what uh, what I meant uh, in, in the introduction. It is not just about uh, sharing a few slides. It's about engagement, uh, growing um, and uh, spread the word. Uh, so um, that that's basically, you know, why we think we it's a, it's a meaningful um, place to have it in the action cluster as an initiative um, and to leverage all that links, basically, is a smart city marketplace can provide. Voila. <laughs> Guys, that was a very nice uh, and positive summary and, and feedback to me. Uh, so with that, I would now leave you. I'm very sorry for that. But I have to split myself into two. It is not possible, in fact. So I need to leave now to not disappoint Simona, because I promised to be there as well. So I wish you a good continuation of the meeting. And of course, offer. I mean, if there's a follow up, um, there might be a meeting, I understand, with Derek also at some point. Um, so we can catch up and, and see what we can do all together. And maybe it's worthwhile also to invite uh, our matchmakers, uh, Josh and, and Ilko, to that meeting, just to see, you know, how, how can we uh, get this, you know, mainstreamed a bit more so that cities are aware of this knowledge, of this approach, and, and truly get what it is and understand what it is. And with this, I wish you a good continuation. Thanks, thanks a lot for having me and, and um, all the best. Uh, see you at some point.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank take you. care. Bye. Thank you. <clears throat> so now back to the other Georg, and I'm uh, yep. moving out as well. Thank you. Yeah, just to pick up, um, I think the PCP at first looks uh, definitely complicated, so following it helps. Uh, having observed a bit uh, when things happen and so on, I do this in a rough uh, guide now, but hence following the project I think is very valuable. Um, then it is definitely the challenge of financing. Yeah, this is something to be thought about. Um, I mean, in this case, the EC have partially solved it, uh, but um, yeah, finding actors on 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 the ground to uh, to activate and to provide such funding, I'm sure there are many opportunities. But yes, we will then have to explain it to them as well. We are happy to be part of the process. But also in financing, um, it's not only good to have a solution ready, it's also good to be then able to push it through the market. And here, the output of Procure is basically very important because complicated solutions in the building renovation, I forgot this point in the beginning, um, are not welcomed by finance, financial actors. They say, that's too complicated. Just give me two centimeters more of styrofoam. This I understand. Uh, I know the performance value of that. That's it. But as soon as you talk about uh, combining various technologies, which uh, all, uh, which, which make the chain of one plus one plus one, not three, but 10, then uh, um, they often step out because each of each item is being considered a risk and the sum of it altogether as well. Hence, the output of Procure is important to basically be, to have evidence to provide, uh, to show how it can, how an existing building can be uh, made 100% renewable with active technology. So um, not only gluing stuff to the building, this makes sense when the building is very old, but in our case, the buildings have a decent performance and they're uh, doing more to the envelope is not necessarily the most efficient way we hope to prove. Uh, but taking a lot of active stuff together, the uh, RES, the storage, uh, building management uh, solutions, monitoring systems, and so on, and activate what is there to basically uh, control it better and to make the work, the building work better as a whole. So, yeah. Continue with the uh, presentation. Um, October, I already mentioned. How is it and to and to continue with financing as well? What is the status of what is a PCP actually? It is not a grant, so it's not a Horizon project. It is a contract. It's a direct contract between uh, a representative of the buyers group, which is called the lead procurer. So it is not like the six cities and um, the suppliers have to sign six contracts each, but they sign one contract with the lead procurer. This is streamlined, um, and uh, who and the supplier answers obviously to the entire consortium of uh, the buyers group um, via this measure, and it is a direct contract, which means it's direct cost. Basically, they make a price up to the ceiling. You saw the ceilings before, um, and. Uh, if he, she performs, the consortium performs, then they can expect the money to be paid um, as a result of an invoice. It's very simple. It's like a, acting in a normal tender. It, um, the preparation of it is more complicated, as it has been described, because uh, a PCP basically um, would be considered state aid if it were not for the innovative factor and uh, the joint procurement and so on. So basically, these are ways to uh, make enable public bodies such as cities to pro uh, procure R&D um, uh, and receive some uh, support from a public body such as the EC. The tendering itself, um, there are eligibility criteria as always. Uh, one requirement from the EC is that 50% of the R&D work is to take place in the EU associated countries. If you were to transfer uh, the PCP to a local level, um, you could probably also require that, I don't know, 50% of the funding is spent within, this, within the bo uh, borders of a country or similar. 
Um, yeah, this is the boring stuff. I will not uh, explain it in detail. You can look at it later in the in the slides. Um, but basically, it is a contract. It is being monitored as usual. Uh, it has certain set points to which marks it to be completed. And at the end of it, if uh, the suppliers act on the IPR, it is solely to them. If they do not act on it, then the procurers get, after four years, the right to use the IPR for their own uh, services in any other way. And hereby, questions. You can type, you can raise your hands. Um, and. Um, Georg, um, um, I have received a, a few questions in the in the run up, basically, um, of today. Um, <clears throat> what uh, what you said at the beginning is that the um, procurer group, so the group of cities, is open for other cities to join. Yeah, not in the yeah for other cities to join. In the sense that we will make them part of the process, we will give them insight into what is being uh, done in the project. We cannot make them beneficiaries anymore. Yeah, and the project that this process has happened with the EC, we cannot make you immediately uh, partner of the project and make you uh, enable you to basically equip buildings in your at your site. But we invite you to follow it to get insight of what suppliers uh, offer, to see what supply how, how the supplier process interaction uh, process works and in the end of it uh, we will uh, or at some point where uh, it will suit we try to invite you to visit the sites we have to visit um, basically the solution as it is to basically see what the bill what the buildings have been equipped with and there we can support you also financially to basically visit the site um, so, so uh, basically, so that would mean, okay, you, you would not become, so the group of six wouldn't become a group of seven, but uh, it would probably become six plus one. So, yeah, let's say, so you, you could follow um, through the entire process, you would have access to all the information and documents. And if you see that um, this is a solution who would fit your own um, problem, let's say, um, then you have all the material on hand to, let's say, copy paste that um, or makes it happen for, for yourself. Exactly. That's the point. Uh, you learn by following us and you get access by our to our improved uh, materials towards uh, through the lifetime of the project. Yeah. Um, Doing this PCP is in an extent, uh, it is pre-commercial, so by there, thereby it is a bit risky. We don't know what comes first, and we don't know how well it performs second, but we are answering these questions. And through this, you know, uh, you will be able to judge better uh, what to procure for and uh, if you procure what to take and how to get it. Um, and then there were uh, two practical questions. Um, one is, um, is that basically uh, limited to a city of a certain size, or is no. it that's open? Anyone, we <laughs> are open. Anyone who basically runs building is welcome to uh, to follow us. Um, okay, and then the next, uh, let's say, very operational question: um, the six cities, as far um, um, as shown, are from six different countries, right? Correct. Um, all the documents. Um, used during the process, so from from defining the problem and the criteria, uh, will they be available in uh, the six languages? Uh, no, uh, we have decided against that. We um, this couldn't be done, could be done, but uh, what will be available in different languages is the final request for tender. This document will be translated, but the uh, the challenge brief and uh, certain templates will be in English because. They will come back. They will, I mean, they make a turn and come back to us, and we need to be able to evaluate them. And everybody in the group needs to be able to evaluate them. So uh, the focus here is on English for okay. the practical reason. Um, and the the um, but, but as a note, sorry, oh. Jürgen, but as a note, 
obviously there is an opportunity to also to speak not only to us nadia and me but to the city's native language yeah if there is someone in spain uh, who, uh, who wants to talk about the pcp the project and so on then we connect you with uh, our colleagues in barcelona to uh, to make the exchange and i see just here um, a question in the chat from george he says how can a small sme that only supplies a specific technology can join a consortium that will have that will answer the tender for the multi technologies yeah i jumped to one of the slides uh because it's uh, easy to show yeah basically um this is definitely possible if you provide something a consortium doesn't have or you provide something which convinces a consortium of uh, uh wow this is uh, this really brings us forward yeah, then go to our website. There's a matchmaking platform. You can enter your details there and basically offer your services to other uh, consortia, other partners. And we will also run two uh, further OMCs in the coming month, end of, the, of, end of this month and later on, where we will also uh, provide um, um, yeah, matchmaking opportunities, basically, where you can meet and briefly exchange. And here on this platform, to be said, there are also contact details. So you're obviously also invited. If someone says we are coordinators, we search for partners to contact them. Yeah, you can build your consortium. And uh, can can you even extend that to the fact that um, the supplier is not only supplying a single technology, but is also usually serving uh, um, or providing its services in a single country? So just one of the six. Uh, this is if it is a contractor who does local work then this is understandable if it is uh, a technology provider it is not advised for because we want a european solution we want a market solution which is uh, which can be delivered anywhere yeah we don't know where the follower procurers will come from it might be that they are only from spain it might be they are only from israel but it might be that they are in france and a certain readiness to uh, to pro uh, to to suit these markets is definitely helpful okay. but but we will need local contractors to uh, to do work at the building site obviously Okay, so the, the local contractors, or let's say the implementation, um, is that uh, separate from the uh, technology solution um, decision? Yeah. Depends how the consortium is set up. Yeah, uh, that's hard. That's tricky. Um, let me jump to the phases. Oh, you can see the phases here as well. So if we look at phase uh, two and three. So it can be that uh, there is a consortium which is basically all in. They have everything. They have experts. They can put on a plane. They go there. They do everything in two days and they go back. Yeah. It can be that there are uh, uh, supplier consortia which basically have they are large already or they are small. It doesn't matter. Uh, they are mostly uh, technology providers, but they have a partner who integrates everything for them. But they're not, they never have been those who in, to install this stuff. They always need someone to install it. Well, then they get subcontracts. They can get them already as part out of the tender, but they can also reserve a budget for subcontracting as part of the, uh, of the tender proposal and then when we join when we come here to end uh, phase three during the call off they must be able they must be able to quickly pull subcontractors local workers to do the job uh, locally yeah. and uh, and part of the um, solution is probably also linked to the financing side because you meant uh, beforehand that uh, in, there is a you know let's say a flat curve is uh, preferred uh, from a city perspective when it comes to to uh, financing or um, paying for the for the implementation um, is that something which um, um, is rather free for a consortium to bring in so that they that they bring in a solution they would favor or they would recommend yes yeah i mean um it can be this is one of the hardest things to anticipate how it's being done. Yeah, I mean, the most obvious uh, answer is there is an ESCO, which has a model which they basically uh, bore up a bit to uh, to to um, uh, 
tweak a bit to to be able to serve uh, our setting. I mean, during the PCP, it doesn't matter really. Yeah, the financing is secured. But uh, for the future, they must be able to basically show how it could be done. And um, actually, part of the tender part of the offer is obviously also to show how the operation of the building in, for the next 10 years is to be uh, proven. So thanks, Jürgen. It's a good question. I always forget this. Um, so if you win and you are in phase three and uh, you do a decent job, then you also have a maintenance contract for the 10 years afterwards, obviously, because uh, the building, uh, it is special, this building, only if you can maintain it. And if you can show that you can maintain it well, then you most likely will be also contracted by the city to do, to do this job once the project ends, because a public project always has to end. It cannot be uh, continued. So, okay, I, I don't have more questions on my list here. I don't know if there's any other question coming in from the audience. Um, you might, I mean, um, Nadia has already sent around the link um, where you can uh, find more information, but also that uh, the presentation deck will be shared or is shared. Um, I'm just in the content library now. Okay. Um, yeah, so we what we said as well as at, um, 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 toward the end, um, as we have uh, five minutes left, basically. Um, I said that uh, um, pre-commercial procurement is uh, or has become an initiative in itself. Um, there's also a link to it in the chat um, where further information um, will be stored and where likely also the presentation here will be stored. Um, at the end of the presentation, you will also find um, some, some links uh, and contact details. So there are principal links where you can find more information. Um, first point of contact for any any other question who might come up uh, at a later stage, um, um, you can send an email also directly to George. Uh, he is also the leader of the initiative. Uh, in addition, um, if you if you want to basically um, keep um, informed about the progress, um, it just uh, you know submit your contact details to George, um, and uh, he will uh, forward them to the Smart City Marketplace. Um, so that you will then basically follow the initiative uh, and they get the uh, relevant updates to it. Um, and the um, the next actions we have here on the table um, is also like uh, George from the commission said, uh, is um, to reach further out um, via the various links uh, the Smart City Marketplace uh, provides. Um, yeah. Thanks a lot yeah. from my side. Um, yeah, I, um, if I may. Um, yeah, thanks, Jürgen. Thanks for the opportunity in general. Uh, I, towards the end, I, uh, you, you noticed that I answered questions quite complicatedly. Well, I can't even get the word straight. Uh, in a complicated manner, because uh, these are partially uh, details which are not yet decided. Yeah, so this is why we are in this open market consultation. But as soon as the request for tender is out, everything will be on paper. It will be everything will be uh, clear. So just because you haven't received all the answers for pre-commercial procurement today, it is because the pre-commercial procurement is not uh, not uh, get me a door with the size of two meters times eighty centimeters, but it is slightly more complicated, and you have to make decisions. And in this process, we are currently. But once we've done. Uh, the documentation will be there and will be available uh, for you. If you want to follow us, just a note, join our OMC events. I mentioned uh, if you are a supplier, go to the matchmaking platform. If you want to provide input on what we should request from the OMC, uh, from the supplier, sorry, answer the OMC questionnaire, all of it each you can find on the website. And if you are uh, on the demand side running buildings and you want to follow the project, just email us, uh, Nadia or me, and um, yeah, we will forward your mail to, um, to also to join the Smart City Marketplace uh, news, but also us, obviously. And we will have focused events only for you, only for the procurers, and answer your questions. Voila. With these final words, thanks, everybody. Um, thanks you, Nadia, George, uh, the whole Smart, Smart City Market team for uh, having organized the session, everybody who has joined, um, and then, uh, well, let's stay in contact, let's work together. It's the beginning of a journey, 
And uh, yeah, we hope to hear and see you soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Jürgen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.